Here we are. The mics are back on, and this is Radio Entrepreneurs. And uh, wow, it just seems like we interviewed this guest last month, and we might have. <laughs> uh, Michelle Kleiger, president and founder of Stratagerm Consulting, but also publisher now of The Demise of Free Trade, The U.S.-China Trade War Explained. Welcome. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for having me again. Can you really explain the U.S.-China trade war? Well, I can provide an overview for people <laughs> that are interested in learning more about the situation. Right. So I take a look at where we've been for the last 18 months since Tariff started. I define that the trade war started in July when retaliatory tariffs really took off between the two countries. And then I look at uh, the impact on consumers and businesses so that in a very uh, basic sense so that people can begin to understand how this will affect their wallets um, and some of the reasons why we don't have a trade deal yet. And so it's a combination of culture and politics and um, you know, globalization. Well, you say the impact. Can we start there? Sure. I'd love to. Okay. Start with the impact and then how do you think, who do you think really started it? The trade war? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the first country to put tariffs on anyone in this realm was the United States. So um, I look at the different ways that President Trump uh, has levied tariffs on different countries, whether it's national security threats with steel and aluminum or um, trying to enforce better intellectual property in China. Uh, so the United States trade representative has been looking at intellectual property protection or lack thereof in China for um, decades now. And actually, in my previous career, I um, lobbied in China to help promote stronger intellectual property. So it's definitely an ongoing concern, and that's really where these tariffs, sorry, that's really where these tariffs stem from. Um, but, and so the United States, you know, followed proper protocol within the United States to implement them, and the WTO is now deciding whether they're fair Sub or not. Subjective comment. Do you really think that the United States can force China to no, I don't think bend to their will? <laughs> I, so a thing that people say that have worked in China is that China will do what it wants when it benefits That's what China I assume. the most. Right. So China will adopt stronger intellectual property when Chinese companies will benefit from it. So as you have more high tech in China, those companies are lobbying their government for stronger intellectual property rights. And the government's going to respond to Chinese companies and what they want, not what United States. Not to the United States. Exactly. I don't think China has bent to foreign will for over a thousand mm -hmm. years, right? They would mm -hmm. argue that uh, they had the century of humiliation from about 1840 to 1940, where they lost many wars and um, did have to cave to pressure from Europe and Japan. And so are really trying to reestablish themselves after that period and very against being told what to do by outside influences. Very good. Uh, and again, the impact on the United States. Or let's say, what do you, is there an impact that you could discuss on American entrepreneurs? Sure. Um, I mean, so I think that there's an impact on, on everyone. Um, and so the examples in the book sort of range from basically how tariffs work and how they raise prices. Um, so the example I use is if you wanted to buy a couch today, and this might not apply directly to an entrepreneur, but we'll see. Um, so if you wanted to buy a couch today, a, United States, a couch in the United States cost you $250, and that same couch in China would have cost you $225, right? So now there's a 25% tariff, which means that the couch will cost 25% more of 225, picked easier numbers in the book, which would have made this math much easier to do in my head right now. Um, but essentially what happens is that couch costs more, the Chinese couch costs more than the American, um, so you would then probably buy the American couch. So that's great if you are selling American goods. However, if you're buying the couch, you now have paid more than you would have paid yesterday, leaving you less money for other purchases. And one of the ways I think this really impacts entrepreneurs is a lot of entrepreneurs are in service fields um, and we're very service-based economy right now. So if you have less money to buy goods, if, if goods cost more, you have less money left over, which will leave you less money to buy those services. So if you might not be buying, uh, paying for a coach of some sort, if you're 
you know, meat or other products or couches or clothing, or if all those things are now costing more, that leaves you less money to invest in services. So those entrepreneurs in those service fields are directly affected. And then the other place we think of entrepreneurs is tech fields. And a lot of the components that are go into our technology products come from China. And so you'll see higher costs of goods in those fields as well. Interesting. Well, what motivated you to write the book as you were already consulting or was it a way of supporting your consulting practice? It was definitely part of that building the consulting practice. But one of the things I've done is, you know, since the trade to since um, the president's agreed to delay future tariffs in January or December, I had been writing online a lot, trying to do posts that were 500 to 1,000 words, sort of giving these basic examples. Um, and I've continued to get positive feedback and um, either in the form of comments or more followers. And, you know, so a lot of those people would say things like, you know, this makes sense, but I had no idea that any of this was going on. And it's just so important, especially when, you know, on the way here, Target and Walmart could have to raise prices up to 20% to make up some of these that I just wanted more people to understand. Especially Walmart that's a low cost. Mm -hmm. uh, that's part of their whole strategy. Right. And so if they are going to pass along costs, and this has been in the news for a year and a half, and so many people still have no idea my goal was to make an sort of entry level discussion for this conversation. So either you want to understand what's going on for yourself, for your business, um, and then once you finish, you would have enough knowledge to figure out the next steps, whether you can adjust your business yourself or whether you need help. Um, but that was really the goal was to sort of build on those conversations that I'm already having online. Interesting. Uh any new books you're thinking about, a follow-up? Um, not yet. I, um, I mean, I guess the question is what happens next. It's, it's interesting because on one hand, you know, there were so many sections that I wrote and had to take out because I just couldn't thread it together, didn't really, you know, think that it fit in on this, you know, keeping the topic understandable and relatable. So... There's definitely enough material in that separate document that says not for this book that, you know, it might be interesting to try to pull that together. But my goal was to have it done before July when I marked the year. And so it's been a lot of writing this year. So I think it's a couple months off before I figure out what's next. Right. And how's everything going at Stratagerm Consulting? It's really coming together. I know we talked about coming back in two years, so it's exciting to be back in two months. Um, but, you know, the pieces are beginning to fall into place. I've been doing a lot more writing on tariffs and trade, like through the book and through outside sources. Um, you know, I have really started to sort of set those foundational pieces. I think when we were here, you know, I sort of vaguely talked about this is what I do, this is who I work with, but I'm actually getting more concrete buckets right now of these are the services I offer and this is how um, I can work with people. So I've been able to really learn from the early clients I have and build out both the tariff and trade consulting as well as the vertical farming business. I mean, I think you're in the right category. It's an exciting business. I hope more people learn about you. We have a, a client at Mage that does a lot of work in manufacturing in China. We have had more than one, but this one controls the source of manufacturing in China. And it's been a great business for them. They're not really worried about any kind of <laughs> tariffs right now. Uh, but we've been speaking with Michelle Kleiger, uh, president and founder of Stratagerm Consulting. Uh, an author of The Demise of Free Trade. Uh, if somebody's looking for Stratagerm Consulting or the book, how would they find either? So um, Stratagerm Consulting has a website, stratagerm.com. Um, I have a website, michellekleger.com, and the book is available on Amazon. Uh, right now it's only a Kindle book, but I'm working on the art to have it as a soft paper. I've actually had a few people ask for the soft paper, um, which is exciting. And as my first book, I'd kind of like to put it on my own bookshelf. So uh, the ebook is definitely already available, but there's going to be a soft cover as well. Great. 
Thanks for being on the show today. Thank you for having me. Look forward to seeing you again before two years. Yes. Great. We'll have to have you more often. Again, my name is Jeffrey Davis. We're going to take a break and we will come back and talk to another new set of entrepreneurs after these messages.